finally, Record has taken his first micro steps and printed a, a calibration cube. It was done on a board running vanilla Linux and without a separate microcontroller for the steppers. Instead, it was done using the AR100 CPU embedded on the Allwinner A64. This is novel because it shows how to do real-time motor control with Linux on a single SOC. And this video explains the trade-offs and how it can be done. Let's start by looking at the extremes. If you set up a microcontroller to loop infinitely while toggling a pin as fast as possible, you might see something along the lines of this. A long train of perfectly square waves with a 33.333% duty cycle accounting for the three instructions needed to set, clear, and loop. If you do the same with a system on chip running a non-real-time operating system, you will see something pretty bad. The speed is much lower and the predictability is gone. Now, there are two reasons for this. If you drop Linux and write a barebone application, things are fine. It's just that, well, nothing else works. If you want to run Linux, you are pretty much stuck with an application processor, Cortex-A something, 53 for instance. In all A-type processors, the GPIO peripherals share a bus with other peripherals, meaning that if you want to do something else like show a picture or use the internet, then you have to share, which leads to unpredictability. Now take a look at this chart again. There is this other CPU here with a bunch of peripherals and its own separate bus. How about we use that for the real-time stuff? That CPU is an AR100 and the main reason for having it is to shut down the main CPU and memory during sleep mode to save power on battery operated equipment. But a 3D printer doesn't need to sleep, so let's use it for something else. I've spent the last few weeks looking at how the AR100 can be used for real-time operations. In particular, I wanted to run Clipper, a popular 3D printer firmware suited for a combination of application processor with a microcontroller processor. On the microcontroller side, Clipper needs three things. A way to toggle pins fast and with predictable latency. A communication channel between the main CPU and the microcontroller. A good timer with an interrupt. In the A64, there are two classes of GPIO banks. Several banks are connected to the main bus, but one bank is special and connected to the dedicated bus for the AR100. I set up some tests comparing the speed and predictability of these two types of GPIO banks. The special bank uses four instruction cycles to toggle a pin, while the general purpose bank uses 18. But what is more interesting is the amount of jitter on the transitions. Because the special bank has a more direct line to the AR100, the number of collisions can be limited and even be removed completely. The trick is to just not share any of those peripherals. Revision A2 of Recor has all step and direction pins connected to one of the general purpose banks, but even so, the results are pretty good. For the next, I'm switching to the special bank though. The second thing needed is a communication channel between the main CPU and the AR100. The most straightforward approach would probably be to use some shared memory and have a circular buffer. That would maybe be faster, but it would also cause traffic on the bus. Instead, I opted for a loopback between the UART and the main CPU and the UART for the AR100. That way, traffic can be routed away from the shared bus. I did some tests looking at the speed and at 15 megabaud, we are at the top of the list for UR based solutions in the benchmark for Clipper. The third and final problem was finding a timer. All events in Clipper are based on a 32 bit constantly running timer that increases with every CPU cycle. The timer that is available to the AR100 is not clocked by the CPU itself, but by the main oscillator at 24 megahertz. This is not great, but there is another solution. The tick timer facility included as a part of the OR1000 instruction set architecture. This can be set to run freely and has a single cycle instruction fetch to read the number of cycles passed. So putting it all together, we have a working 3D printer control board with Clipper and Octoprint. Pretty nice. 
I did some measurements to see how Recore stacks up against other boards running Clipper, and the results were promising. 200% uh, increase over the previous best. But I'm sure that can be improved upon. Bye.